contemplation of dhyans dvatanupassana sutta thus have i heard on one occasion the blessed one was dwelling in savatthi in the eastern park of garmatha's mansion now on that occasion the opposite of the day of the 15th the full moon night the blessed one was seated in the open surrounded by sangha of bhikkhus then having so wait the completely silent sangha of bhikkhus he addressed him thus bhikkhus if others ask you what is your aim in listening to those teaching that are wholesome noble emancipating leading to an enlightenment you should answer them thus for the accurate knowledge of this avoid in the yards and what would one call a dhyan the four noble truths this is suffering this is the origin of suffering this is one contemplation this is the cessation of suffering this is the way leading to the cessation of suffering is the second contemplation when a bhikkhu dwells thus correctly contemplating a dhyan heedful ardent and resolute one of true fruits is to be expected of him is the final knowledge in this very life o if there is a residue remaining the state of non returning this is what the blessed one said having said this the fortunate one the teacher further said this those who do not understand suffering or the origin of suffering who do not know where suffering completely ceases without reminder and who do not know the path that leads to the allaying of suffering the attitude of liberation of mind and also of liberation by wisdom incapable of making an end they fear to birth and old age but those who understand suffering and the origin of suffering who knows as well where suffering completely ceases without reminder and who understand the path that leads to the allaying of suffering they are possessed of mind's liberation and also liberation by wisdom capable of making an end they fear no more to birth and old age if bhikkhus there are those who ask could there be correct contemplation of the arts in some other way you should answer them thus there could be and how could there be whatever suffering originates is conditioned by acquisition there is one contemplation with the remainderless fading away and cessation of acquisitions there is no origination of suffering this is the second contemplation when we could verse this the teacher further said this suffering since there are many forms in the world originate based on acquisition the ignorant dullard who creates acquisition encounters suffering again and again therefore understanding one should not create acquisition contemplating it is the acquisitions contemplating it is the genesis and origin of suffering if bhikkhus there are those who ask could there be correct contemplation of dhyans in some other way you should answer them thus there could be and how could there be whatever suffering originates is all conditioned by ignorance this is one contemplation with the remainderless fading away and cessation of ignorance there is no origination of suffering this is the second contemplation when bhikkhus dwelled thus the teacher further said this those who travel again and again in the sansara of birth and death it is becoming this becoming otherwise that journey is due to ignorance it is because of ignorance this great delusion that one has wandered for so long but those beings who have gained clear knowledge do not come back to renewed existence volitional activities if bhikkhus there are those who ask could there be correct contemplation of dhyans in some other way you should answer them thus there could be and how could there be whatever suffering originate is all conditioned by volitional activities this is one contemplation 
with the remainder of fading away and cessation of volitional activities there is no origination of suffering this is a second contemplation when a big good was thus the teacher further said this whatever suffering originates is all conditional by volitional activities with the cessation of volitional activities there is no origination of suffering when one has known this danger suffering is conditioned by volitional activities by the stilling of all volitional activities by the stopping of perceptions the destruction of suffering occurs when one has known this as it really is seeing rightly the master of knowledge the wise one having correctly known this overcome the yoke of mara and do not come back to the renewed existence consciousness if vikus there are those who ask could there be correct contemplation of dayas in some other way you should answer them thus there could be and how could there be whatever suffering originates is all conditioned by consciousness this is one contemplation with the remainderless fading away and cessation of consciousness there is no origination of suffering this is a second contemplation when a big good dwells thus the teacher further said this whatever suffering originates is all conditioned by consciousness with the cessation of consciousness there is no origination of suffering having understood this danger suffering is conditioned by consciousness by the stilling of consciousness a bhikkhu hungerless has attained nibbana contact if bhikkhus there are those who ask could there be correct contemplation of dayas in some other way you should answer them thus there could be and how could there be whatever suffering originates is all conditioned by contact this is one contemplation with the remainder of fading away and cessation of contact there is no origination of suffering this is a second contemplation when a book could verse thus the teacher further said this those afflicted by contact roving alone with stream of existence have entered upon deviant path the destruction of fetters is far from them but those who have fully understood contact who have been known it delight in peace by breaking through contact hungerless are fully quenched feeling if vikus there are those who ask could there be correct contemplation of dayas in some other way you should answer them thus there could be and how could there be whatever suffering originates is all conditioned by feelings this is one contemplation with the remainderless fading away and cessation of feeling there's no origination of suffering this is a second contemplation when a big good well as thus the teacher further said this whether it is pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant whatever the eye is that is felt internally and externally having known this is suffering of a false nature disintegrating having touched and touched them seeing they are vanishing one understand them thus through the destruction of feelings a bhikkhu hungerless a bhikkhu hungerless is fully quenched craving if bhikkhus there are those who ask could there be a correct contemplation of dhyas in some other way you should answer them thus there could be and how could there be whatever suffering originates is all conditioned by like craving this is one contemplation the remainder is fading away and the cessation of craving there is no origination of suffering this is a second contemplation when a big good voice does the teacher further said this what craving as a partner a person wandering on this long journey does not transcend samsara what is becoming this becoming otherwise having known this danger craving is the origin of suffering a bhikkhu should wander mindfully free of craving without grasping clinging if bhikkhus 
There are those who ask, could there be correct contemplation of Dhyas in one other way? You should answer them thus, there could be. And how could there be? Whatever suffering originates is all conditioned by clinging. This is one contemplation. With the remainderless fading away and cessation of clinging, there is no origination of suffering. This is the second contemplation. When a bhikkhu dwells thus, the teacher further said this, Existence is conditioned by clinging. An existent being undergoes suffering. For one who is born there is death. For one who is born there is death. This is the origin of suffering. Therefore, having correctly understood, having directly known the destruction of birth, through the destruction of clinging, the wise don't come back to the renewed existence. Instigation If, because, there are those who ask, could there be correct contemplation of jihads in some other way? You should answer them thus, there could be. And how could there be? Whatever suffering originates is all conditioned by instigation. This is one contemplation. With the remainderless fading away and cessation of instigation, there is no origination of suffering. This is the second contemplation. When a big good verse does, the teacher further said this. Whatever suffering originates is all conditioned by instigation. With the cessation of instigation, there is no origination of suffering. Having known this danger, suffering is conditioned by instigation. Having relinquished all instigation, one is liberated in non-instigation. A bhikkhu with a peaceful mind, who has cut off craving for existence, has finished with wandering on in births. For him, there is no renewed existence. Nutriment If bhikkhus, there are those who ask, could there be a correct contemplation of dhyads in some other way? You should answer them thus, there could be. And how could there be? Whatever suffering originates is all conditioned by nutriment. This is one contemplation. With remainderless fading away and cessation of nutriment, there is no origination of suffering. This is second contemplation. When Big Quit was this, the teacher further said this. Whatever suffering originates is all conditioned by nutriment. With cessation of nutriment, there is no origination of suffering. Having known this danger, suffering is conditioned by nutriment. Having fully understood all nutriment, one is not attached to any nutriment. Having correctly understood the state of health through the utter destruction of influxes, using the reflection firm in the Dhamma, the master of knowledge cannot be designated. Agitation If vikus, there are those who ask, could there be correct contemplation of Jats in some other way? You should answer them thus, there could be. And how could there be? Whatever suffering originates is all conditioned by agitation. This is one contemplation. With the remainderless fading away and cessation of agitation, there is no origination of suffering. This is the second contemplation. When a big good was thus, the teacher further said this. Whatever suffering originates is all conditioned by agitation. With the cessation of agitation, there is no origination of suffering. Having known this danger, suffering is conditioned by agitation, they are, therefore having given up impulse, having put a stop to volitional activities, without impulse, without clinging, a bhikkhu should wander mindfully. Dependency If bhikkhus, there are those who ask, could there be correct contemplation of dhyas in some other way? You should answer them thus, there could be. And how could there be? For one who is dependent, there is a quaking. This is one contemplation. One who is independent does not quake. This is the second contemplation. When a big good was thus, the teacher further said this. One who is independent does not quake, but one who is dependent, clinging to things, 
does not transcend its samsara, which is becoming this, becoming otherwise. Having known this danger, as a great peril in dependencies, independent without clinging, a bhikkhu should wander mindfully. Forms and formless states. If bhikkhu, there are those who ask, could there be a correct contemplation of dhyads in some other way? You should answer them thus. There could be. And how could there be? Formless states are more peaceful than state of form. This is one contemplation. Cessation is more peaceful than formless states. This is the second contemplation. When the bhikkhus tells us, the teacher first said this, Those beings who fell onto form and those who dwell in the formless, not understanding cessation, come back to renewed existence. But those who have fully understood forms, without settling down in formless states, who are liberated in cessation, those people have an abundant death. Truth and falsity. If because there are those who ask, could there be a correct contemplation of the arts in some other way? You should answer them thus. There could be. And how could there be? In this world, because if it devas, mavra, brahma, among this population which is ascetics and brahmins, its devas and humans, that which is regarded as this is true, the noble one have seen it well with correct wisdom thus. This is false, this is one contemplation. In this world, with its devas and humans, that which is regarded as this is false, the noble one have seen it well with correct wisdom thus. This is true, this is second contemplation. When a vikas dwells this, the teacher further said this, Behold the world together with its devas, conceiving a self in what is non-self, settled upon name and form, they conceive, this is true. In whatever way they conceive it, it turns out otherwise. That indeed is its falsity. That indeed is its falsity. For the transient is of false nature. Nibbana is of a non-false nature, that is the noble one know as truth. Though the breakthrough to truth, hungerless, they are fully quenched. Happiness and suffering. If because there are those who ask, could there be correct contemplation of theirs in some other way? You should answer them thus, there could be. And how could there be? In this world, Vikus, which is Devas, Mara and Brahma among this population, which is ascetics and Brahmins, is Devas and humans, what is which is regarded as disease happiness? The noble ones have seen well with correct wisdom thus, this is suffering, this is one contemplation. In this world, which is Devas and humans, that is which is regarded as this is suffering, the noble ones have seen well with correct wisdom thus, this is happiness, this is a second contemplation. When a big could well this correctly contemplating a dhyad, heedful, ardent and resolute, one of two fruits is to be expected of him. Either final rage in this very life, or if there is a residue of clinging, the state of non-returning. This is what the Blessed One said. Having said this, the fortunate one, the teacher, further said this. Forms, sound, taste, oils, textures and objects of mind, all are desirable, lovely, agreeable, so long as it is said they are. These are considered as happiness in the world with its devas, but where they cease that they consider suffering. The noble ones have seen as happiness the ceasing of the personal entity. Running counter to the entire world is this insight of those who see. What others speak of as happiness, the noble ones speak of as suffering. What others speak of as suffering, the noble ones have known as happiness. Behold this dumb heart to comprehend, here the foolish are bewildered. There's a gloom for those who are blocked, darkness for those who don't see. What for the good it is open up, like light for those who see. The brutes unskilled in the Dhamma don't understand it even when close. This Dhamma is not easily understood by those who are afflicted by lust of existence, by whose flowing in the stream of existence, deeply mired in a mar of well. 
who else apart from the noble ones are able to understand this state when they have correctly known that state those without influxes attain nibbana this is what blessed one said elated those bhikkhus delighted in blessed one's statement and while this discourse was being spoken the minds of 60 bhikkhus were liberated from the influxes by non clinging 